Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen today we have a puzzle by none other than Richard Stolk from his extraordinary Sudoku Variation series. This series has been appearing regularly on Logic Masters Germany now for years. And to give you an idea of how long this has been running, this is number 284 in the sequence. It's the most recent and it's Fistmafel inspired. And indeed, Fistmafel himself has commented on this puzzle and says it's absolutely beautiful. So when you have a master craftsman like Richard creating a puzzle and a master craftsman like Fistmafel saying the puzzle is beautiful, we are in for an absolute treat today. And indeed, Richard, um, Richard's inspiration for creating this puzzle, I believe, was Fistmafel himself and a rule set that Fistmafel looked into in a puzzle about six months ago, which surprisingly I don't remember, so I don't think we ever solved it on the channel, which is completely remiss of us. Um, now, two things I want to do before we get into solving Richard's puzzle today. First thing I want to do is to actually have a look at yesterday's puzzle again, which was by Fistemafel. So this is very much a Fistemafel themed episode today. Um, and why do I want to look at that? Well, uh, firstly, uh, during the solve yesterday, I did say I wondered if there was a better way of doing it. And some of you are seriously clever and spotted a cleverer way of doing it. And indeed, I had an email this morning from Fistemafel saying that there was a better way of doing it. And so I'm just going to show you that because I thought it was fascinating. And I think some of you t will enjoy it as well. Um, but before we get into the Sudoku side of this, I just want to mention our Discord server. Um, now, I think we're trotting along at something like 5,000 members for that server at the moment. It's amazing, a thriving community full of setters and solvers, exchanging ideas, testing puzzles, beautiful. And the, um, but we have had some emails from people saying that they want to get involved in the Discord server, but they don't know anything about Discord. And I can empathize with that fully because I am completely useless at Discord, or at least I was until I started having a look at um, our own server. Now, our kind moderators over on our Discord server have created the most incredible guide uh, it's, an, it's an idiot's guide. I understand it. I was reading it earlier and it gives, it tells me a lot of things I didn't know about the Discord server. So if you are new to Discord or you've been on our Discord and aren't quite sure what to do or how it works, I really recommend this. Uh, I will put it up as a community post and also as a link under this video. So do check it out. I can't recommend it too highly. Um, now, let's get on to Fistemafel's puzzle. This is absolutely amazing. So this was the puzzle, and this was basically the point at which I got stuck. I didn't have any digits in the grid or anything, and eventually I managed to make progress by considering a relationship that I felt existed and did exist. It just was very hard to understand between these rows and these columns. Now, what I should have done is I should have considered the relationship between these rows, let's make those purple, and these columns. And if I'd done this, I might have stood a chance of spotting some rather beautiful logic. Now, what is that beautiful logic? Well, let's run through it. What is the sum of these three rows? Well, we know that's three complete rows of a Sudoku. So that's three lots of 45, that's 135. What's the sum of these three columns? Well, it's just exactly the same. It's 135 again. It's three complete columns of the Sudoku. So I know if I add these three rows up and I deduct these three columns, I'm going to get the total of zero. And that is the first insight you need to solving this puzzle. The second rather beautiful insight is to note that if I was to do that sum, i.e. deduct the three columns from the three rows, then whatever values I put in these red squares are irrelevant to that total. I could put 300 gajillion in here and it wouldn't change the total because I'd be adding it in one side of the equation and deducting it in the other side of the equation. If I put Graham's number into that, that cell, it makes no difference. The red cells are irrelevant to the mathematics and that allows us to see a rather lovely trick. Because now if we stare at the purple cells in the rows, you can see that actually a lot of them are taken up with these dominoes. So let's look at the ones that aren't on. I'll highlight the ones that aren't in the dominoes in green. 
So I could view the rows as being 15 plus 12 is 27, 40, 53, 68, 80. So we've got 80 in the dominoes plus the green cells, whatever they happen to equal. And in the columns, I've got, let's remove the ones that aren't in dominoes. Let's make those gray. So in the columns, I've got 15 and 14 is 29. Another 15 is 44. So I've got, so the columns can be expressed as 44 plus the gray cells. So doing, expressing this in an equation, I now know that I've got 80 plus the greens minus 44 minus the greys equals zero. Now, if I rearrange that, I get that the greys minus the greens equal 36. Now, 36 came up yesterday, but it wasn't nearly as helpful as this 36, because this 36 basically allows you to crack the puzzle if you can spot these steps, because now, what's the maximum value I could put in the greys? Well, you can see those three squares need to be different digits. So the maximum I could put into those would be 7, 8, 9. Ditto down there. What's the maximum, minimum, sorry, I can put into the greens? Well, these three are in the same column. So they can be a minimum of 1, 2, and 3. These are exactly the same. So that by using the maximum and the minimum values, can I get to this difference of 36 that I'm after? Well, I've got 24 plus another 24 is 48. Minus 6 minus another 6 is 36. It's the 36 I'm after. So you have to put absolute maximums into the greys and absolute minimums into the greens. And now the puzzle's easy because this square is forced. What can we put in this square? Well, you can see we can't put 1, 2, 3, 7, 8 or 9 into it. We need it to add up to 18. So if I put any number less than 6 in there, I can't make those two add up to enough. These would have to be 13 here. I can't make these two add up to 13. I have to use 6. I have to use 3. I have to use 9. Down here, I have to use 4. So I can use 7 and I can use 1. And you're off to the races. And that was how Fistemafel intended the puzzle to be solved. How cool is that? Am I cross with myself for not spotting it? A little, but it's not an easy, it's definitely not an easy spot. Um, I will wear my hair shirt for a while, but yeah, I mean, if you did spot it, hats off to you. That is really, really impressive solving and just goes to show what I've always believed, which is that this channel is watched by the cleverest people you will find anywhere. Now let's get back to Richard's puzzle, speaking of clever people, um, and let me read you the rules. This is called Isolation Killer Sudoku. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, a normal killer Sudoku rules apply in the sense that, you know, this 24 cage needs to sum to 24. Um, so these four cells sum to 24 and you can't repeat a digit in a cage. Now the tricky part is the next part, which is that if a digit is used in a cage, then that digit cannot be used in any orthogonally connected cage. So if we stick with this 24 and let's say this this cage had a six in it, then there could not be a six in this cage because it's orthogonally connected to this one, this cage because it's orthogonally connected, or that cage. So the six here would have a powerful effect all around the grid over and above the effect it might have on its box. And that is the extra rule that we're gonna to have to think through to solve this puzzle. So as I say from earlier, you, I can't recommend that you have a go at this enough. Do have a try. The way to play is to click the link under the video. And with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. And a bit like yesterday, the thing I immediately notice when I look at this grid is that there are no useful cage totals. All of the cage totals have at least two options. The minimum perhaps is this five, which could be a two, three or a one, four. 13 could be three different cages, three different ways, six, seven, four, nine, five, eight. And everything else I think is even worse than that. So straight away, I suspect we're either gonna to have to do maths or we're gonna to have to use, we're gonna to have to use the structure of the cages somehow. So what can we do? We can,
actually, you know what we can do? We can use the cage I've got highlighted here. This is this is gorgeous. Okay, so this domino. Yeah, this domino is imp it is important because it doesn't give me a digit, but at least gives me a little bit of a lot, a little bit of logic, because if whatever I put into this domino can't appear in those squares and can't appear in those squares because these two cages are orthogonally connected to this cage both of them are so the th whatever i put into this domino has to appear in two of these three cells so two of these three cells add to 13 which means the other one must be a four that's gorgeous i mean the other thing that means i guess is that this yeah, this can't be 4-9, because if it's 4-9, I'd have to put another 4 in here. I'd have to put two 4s and a 9 in, and that's not going to work. So this this is either 5-8 or 6-7. So we've got that down to 2 degrees of freedom now, or 1 degree of freedom, rather than 3, which is what it was originally. So now if there's a 4 in here, there is no 4 in the 14 cage. There's no 4 here by Sudoku. That's not very useful. Oh, that's surprising, isn't it? Because that did feel, it feels like Richard has set this up for a reason. It's such a beautiful idea. Oh, ah, but the puzzle is symmetrical, look. So this nine, yeah, this nine cage works the same way on the 15 cage. So again, Whatever we put into this nine domino can't appear in those six cells, so must appear. Two of these three cells must add up to nine. They must contain whatever we've put in here. So the other digit must be a six. And this nine cage can't be a three six nine cage now. And the 15 cage can't contain a six. Uh, okay. Oh, now here's something interesting. Look, this 24 cage, this tetra shape here, whatever we put in these cells can't appear in those cells. So four of these five cells must be those four digits, which means... Yeah, which means there must be a two in these five cells because four of them, I don't know which four, but four of them are going to add up to 24. But 11 and 15 is 26. So there is a two in this group of cells. Ah, uh, oh, that feels like it's... So now... So now there's no two in here, otherwise there would have to be a second two in there. So there's no two in the 24 cage. It'd be quite helpful if we knew the two was in there rather than there, because then we could rule it out of those cells. Oh, but look. Oh, this is lovely. Right, okay. We've got a 16 cage here. Where do these digits appear in this box? Well, they can't appear in this tetra shape because this cage is connected. So four of these five cells add to 16. Right, this is... Okay. Well, we know that the whichever four cells it is that adds to 16, it's not these four cells because these cells add up to 24. Right, okay, so if if four of these five cells add up to 16, this square has to be a 1. Because if it's not 1, if it's any bigger than 1, if, if we make this 2, these five cells now add up to 24 plus 2, which is 26. But I know four of these five cells, I don't know which four, but four of them add up to 16. So the other digit would have to be a 10. 10 is not allowed. So, so this has to be a 1. And therefore, and because, yeah, okay. 
And now there has to be a 1 in the 16 cage, because if there isn't, the implication of that would be that these four cells exactly map to those four cells, and the last time I looked, 24 and 16 were not the same number. So there must be a 1 in here. And these add to 25. This, yeah, okay, so four of these cells add to 16. The whole five cells add to 25, so one of them must be a 9. A 9 doesn't make an appearance in here. But 9, good grief, this is a, the communication between these three boxes is unbelievable. So now 9 doesn't appear here, so must appear down in one of those five cells. So 2, 9 looks quite good there. But looks quite good isn't logical, so we're not going to go with it. Two, nine. Oh, good grief, look, one is in the 16 cage. So the five can't be a one, four. It must be two, three. And now the 16 cage is forced. It's got a one in it. The other three cells have to add to 15 without using two and three. They must be four, five, and six. That's the only way of doing that. Uh, oh, and now, so now the four, five, and six can't appear there in the, that cage. So they must appear with the nine over here, which bounces back over here again. So the missing cells in this fivesome are the four, five, and six. So these squares are exactly equal to two, four, five, six, and nine. So this, ah, right, that one doesn't have a four in it then, because if it did, it would have to have a seven as well to add to 11. So there's a four in this one. Now the six, well, oh, it's, this is why the six is here, because now, if you look at this cage, we've got a four in it. So two of the cell, the other two cells add to 11. Well now, as we can't have a six in the cage, there cannot be a five, six in there. Impossible. The five, six must be here. And this must be two, four, and nine. That's not five, six by Sudoku then. Those aren't five, six by Sudoku. So these must be one, four. These become 5, 6 by Sudoku. One four sees that square, so that's a 9. 9 doesn't live in those three squares anymore. And we're definitely doing okay, at least at this point. Um, 1, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 2, f oh, yes, yes, this, the 15 cage now, it's got a 6 in it, the other two cells add to 9, they can't be 2, 7, 4, 5, or 3, 6, so it must be 1, 8, that must be 1, 6, 8, that means that's a 5, that's a 6, Six, look, has to be in one of these three squares. Well, can it be in this domino? The answer is no, because if I put a six in there, there has to be a three alongside it. And now this three connects with this cage and you can't put a three in box four. So you can't put a six in this nine cage so the six goes at the top. Wow. One eight. Ah, yeah, yeah. One eight mirrors with this, doesn't it? That's what we looked at at the start. So that's got to be a one eight pair. One eight. One goes here by Sudoku because we can't put a one in the 13 cage. One now is quite restricted in box three because it can't go in any of those cells because that's a connected cage. And it definitely can't go in a 17 cage that already has a 4 in it. So the 1 must be in one of those cells. So 1 is a lining look in columns 7 and 8 there. So 1 
must be in one of those three cells. Mm, don't know, don't know which one of those it goes into yet though. Five. Something I'm quite tempted to do in this puzzle actually is to um, pencil mark, you know, all of these shapes because ordinarily a cell like this would only affect sort of its column, its row and its box. But now this cell can affect, well, it can affect those cells, these cells. So every every digit you get is like super powered. It's like super digits. So in fact, we'd expect this puzzle once you get yeah, once you get a few digits to become much easier than a normal puzzle because every digit has more potency. Now, there must be a 9 in there. There must be a 9 in here. So let's look at this. If this is going to be 1, 3, 7 and 8. That can't be 1. That can't be one, actually. The nine cage can't be six, three. It can't. Ah, the nine cage has to be four, five because it can't be two, seven, or one, eight, or three, six. One now must be in one of those two squares, look, because of this one here and the ones down there. Eight. 8 must be in one of these three cells, so 8 is not there. There's a 4, 5, 6 triple in row 6. There's a lot going on in this puzzle now. Um, and these three squares have got to be 2, 3, 7 and 8. Just wondering if I can deduce anything from that, but I'm not sure that I can. I'm a bit stuck actually. Um, it'd be very helpful to know what this 13 cage was because that would have a mirror there. Oh, oh, hang on. I can do some Sudoku here, look, or some killer Sudoku. I've got a 16 cage and a 14 cage. 16 and 14 is 30, so this little domino here has to add up to 15 to make sure this box adds up to 45. And it can't use a 6, so this has to be 7, 8, I think. That means that's not 7, 8. Oh, that's not 7, 8. That's not 7. So those aren't 3. There's a 1 up here. Let's check. Yeah, that's good. So this square has to be a 3. This has to be a 1. This row, yeah, this row needs an, oh, there's all sorts of things going on now. If we look at this 14 cage, it's got to be 2, 3, and 9. And 2, 3, and 9 do add up to 14, which is good. Um, now, so now, Four can't go here, look, just by Sudoku, because there's a four in one of those cells. So four can't go in those three squares and must appear in one of those squares. So this becomes a two or a nine. Three, one here. So where does three go? Where does three go in this box, look? It can't go there and it can't go there because it's a connected cage. Gosh, that's been available forever. Oh no, I suppose the position of the three mattered. But once the three is here, you actually get a three there, which is incredibly strange. So now where does three go in? So three now has three. Look at where three goes in box eight. 
it's so peculiar it has to go in this domino which means that has to be a two that's a three where does two go in box eight now this two is connected to this cage it has to go in the 11 cage so it has to partner a nine so the nine can't be in those squares this must be nine this must be two that's not two So nine now must ah uh, nine is not nine is not in the nineteen cage, so there must be an eight in the nineteen cage because seven, six, and five only add up to eighteen. Eight now, look, eight is locked into row eight and nine in two different boxes, so those can't be eight. That would be a third nine in those two rows. So eight must go here. One one is forced now. One must be one can't be in those cells or those cells looking at our pencil mark so one must be here which forces this to be nine look beautiful actually is that nine correct let me just i'm not sure that nine was correct because i've just seen i had it pencil marked there as well the one is correct but the nine i think can still go in either position ah but nine has to be over there uh, now I don't think I know the nine. I do know the one though. That's better than nothing. Ah, ah, oh, good grief! Right, look, two three here. Where's two three go in this box? We can't put a two and a three alongside a four in the seventeen cage. The two and the three go in this column. So this square is not two or three. That's a nine. That does fix the nine. Good. So I get that done. There must be a two look in one of those squares. In fact, oh, there's all sorts going on in this row. What's going on in this row? We've got a four, five, six triple. So this cannot be a four. In fact, it's got to be a nine by Sudoku. So that means that's a two, that's a four. This is not four. This is a two now by Sudoku. Sudoku coming into its own. I should focus more on that, I know. Um, three, seven, eight, triple in row four. So that squares a two, that's a three. This is not three. Here's something a little bit interesting. The 13 cage here is either 5, 8 or 6, 7. So it forms a virtual pair with this square. Therefore, this square cannot be a 7 or an 8, because if it is, you can't fill the 13 cage. So this must be a 3. Okay. Now, what next? This is a, I mean, what a beautiful puzzle though, eh? I mean, it's nothing less than I'd expect from Richard, but it's just so original. Oh, this is a two, three, seven triple. So this can't be seven because we need the seven to get up towards 18. So this, this square's got to be an eight or a nine. It's either gonna be three, seven or seven, two here. So either 10, or nine, which means this is either eight or nine. Then the seven, where does the seven go? Seven can't go in those squares because seven is in this one. So seven must go down there somewhere. And, oh, good Lord. Oh my goodness. There's a three, seven pair in this box. Look how you get to this three, seven pair. There's a seven in here. There's a seven eight here, so there is no seven in those three squares. So the seven in box nine is in one of those four positions, critically in row eight and nine, which meets its friend there. So the seven, the seven in row seven has to be in one of those squares and can't be here 
because this has a 7, 8 pair in it. So the 7 is in those two squares, and that is a 3, 7 pair, which means those squares are a 4, 5, 6. And that is absolutely useless. I don't believe it. It is useless. Bobbins. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Um, okay, what do we do now then? We've got to look somewhere else. We should look for... I don't know where we should look. I'm struggling to see. Let us look at... Ah, those squares are a bit restricted, look, because we've got a 1, 8 pair here and 4, 5, 6, 9 here in a connected cage. So those can only be 2, 3 or 7, which gives us a 2, 3, 7 triple in column 4, which of course... Oh, I don't believe that's not useful either. So this uh, that square's got to be 4, 5, or 6. It can't be 6. So this is 4 or 5. How can this not be useful? That felt like amazing. I don't know. That's really, really harsh. Um... I don't know. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think again. Let's think again. What can we think about now? Um, seven. This column. Let's look at this column. Look, because we've done most of it. Those two squares have to be two and nine. Okay, that's good. Two and nine go there. I say it's good, it doesn't exactly fill the puzzle, does it? Those three squares, therefore, have got to be 4, 5 and 7 in some order. These three squares have got to be 1, 8 and 9. And 7, 8... I'm getting that feeling you sometimes get when you solve a puzzle where it started off well, but then I've got so many things buzzing around in my head at the moment that I really am not sure how to keep being efficient. It just feels like there are so many places I could possibly look that I'm really struggling to see the wood from the trees. Um, Hmm. It's a five six pair here. I know one of those digits has to appear in the seventeen cage, but exactly one of them. So exactly one of them must be in those three squares where they join the two and the three. So this cannot have a one in it. The one must go there. That does give me a one over in that box, look. So this becomes an eight, nine pair. Nine can't go there, look, good grief. Because this nine obviously sees that square by this peculiar rule. So nine's now a line in row one, row three in these boxes. So where does the nine go in this box? It must go here. Wow, okay. This one fixes the one four below it. That means there is a four in one of those squares. Can it go in the 19 cage? 12, yes, it can. The missing digits from this column look, if we look down here, we've not let yet placed the eight and the seven. I don't see how to resolve it. This still could be either of those digits. This could be either of those digits. Two, three, one, four, five, six. Um, 
two, three. Seven, eight, nine. I don't know what to do. There must be a simple way of figuring this out. I wish I knew what it was. Oh, you know what I might be able to do? I might be able to do some geometry on this column. Look, I've just noticed that. Hang on. Yeah, these four cells. 19 and 5 is 24, so these four cells add to 21. 21 plus 15 is 36, plus 14 is 50, plus 17 is 67. So the yellow squares add to 67, but I know this column adds to 45. So those three squares add to 22. So this can't be a 4. Ah, that's important. If these add to 22, that has to be a 5 or a 6, but that forces the 4 down into the 19 cage along with an 8. So this is 4, 7, 8. That's 5, 6. That feels like it must be important, is it not? 4, 7, 8 triple here now. Yes, okay, look, this square is restricted now because it sees one, four, five, six in this cage and and four, seven, eight in the column and nine in the nine in the column. This can only be a two or a three, and can it be both of those? Ah yes, no. Yes, it can, but there is now a 237 triple in row 3, which means that square is an 8, and that is huge, because that 8, that 8 means this 17 cage is 467, it is not 458, so if this is 467, this is an 8, this is a 7, and as this is a four six seven, this is four. This is a six seven pair as well, because we know. Oh, oopsie! Uh, we know this must mirror this. What a puzzle! So these squares are two, three, and five. This is six seven, which fixes that this is eight. This is seven. This is seven. This is eight. Maybe we might be on the home stretch because that's cut. That's a six by Sudoku. This six fixes the six and the one. The one and the eight, the eight, eight and the four, the four and the five, the seven. The six fixes the five down here, which means that square should be a four. That's a five. The seven fixes the seven and the three. Good grief, I don't believe it. And I think we are, well, we're doing a lot better than we were. That is what I will say. So this is a 2-3 pair now. I feel like I should be able to resolve. Ah, this 8 perhaps. Yeah, that 8 gives me a 9 here. The 18 cage now must be 2-7. So this becomes a 3. That's not a 3. Two seven here, two three here. So the two must be at the top of row one, which means that's a three and that's a five. Yes, three, two, two, seven. This square can't be seven anymore, and that one can't be six. The six fixes the six and the seven. Actually, that's been sitting there for a bit, hasn't it? Oops, um, that's a five now. These two squares have got to be 8 and 9. Uh, I don't know if I know the order. I think I probably do, but I just can't spot it quickly. So let's fill those two in instead and make, make it feel like we're making progress. Yeah, okay. So now, ah, that, yeah, that's got to be 9 because there's a 9 here. That's 8. That's 8. That looks like it's working. This 5 forces the 5 here. 5, 6, 6, 4. And that is, I think, yes. 
how to solve Richard's brilliant, brilliant puzzle. That was a real struggle. Um, but the logic, the logic, my goodness, it was brilliant. Um, hope you enjoyed watching um, and we'll see you later on, of course, hopefully for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.